What up, what up, that's Numb His Squad, and welcome back, guys. Hey, it's your boy, Sean. And your girl, Mel. Yes. Welcome, welcome, s and <laughs> Squad. All How right. are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys. Hey, if you're having a rough day all day, let's turn around, all right? With some good energy and, of course, some good content. All My right. lovely wife, who do we have today? What all right, babe. Name? Today we'll be reacting to Kamala Harris Town Hall admits it only takes pre-selected questions. Whoa, Nelly. Wow. So you want pre-selected questions. Pre-selected questions. I like can't a catch you off guard, right? <laughs> like a cheat sheet. Okay. Wow. All right, so guys, before we get into it, smash that like button, turn on all notifications. Here we go. Let's dive all straight right, into let's it. Let's go. Let's see what we got, guys. Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Janine Hero, along with Harold Ford Jr., Jesse Waters, Dana Perino, and Greg Gutfeld. It's five o'clock in New York City, and this is the five. The five. All right. The five. Two weeks to go, and poor Kamala Harris is all tuckered out. The candidate who likes to taunt Trump as exhausted is taking a day off from the campaign trail to prep for some pre-taped interviews with NBC and Telemundo. And that's not the only sign that Kamala is running on fumes. The vice president was out trotting out tired old attack lines about President Trump being the old threat to democracy even though voters simply aren't buying it. Hmm. Donald Trump is an unserious man, but the consequences of him being president of the United States are brutally serious. There are things that he says that will be the subject of skits and laughter and jokes, but words have meaning coming from someone who aspires to stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. Kamala also mm. apparently can't take the heat. Check out this moment when her town hall moderator, Maria Shriver, flat out admits that Harris will only take pre-selected questions. Uh -oh. Wow. So sit back, be comfortable. Are, are we going to be able to you're not, unfortunately. We have some predetermined uh, questions, and I hopefully I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. I hope so. And wow. while Kamala takes a right hard charging Donald Trump is making a mad dash to the finish line with appearances in two separate states. He's holding a rally later tonight in Battleground, North Carolina. And earlier, he held a roundtable with Latino leaders in Miami, where he took a shot at Harris's lackluster schedule. Uh-oh. I was going to hit her really hard on the trail today, but now I don't have to because uh, she's off. <laughs> no, I can't get over it. Who the hell takes off? You have 14 days left. And she'll take a couple of more days off, too. You know why? She's lazy as hell. Whoa. Okay, no lies detected there. Nelly. No lies the detected there. The gloves are off. Let's get into it, baby. I love it. We only got It looks like left. Trump has dropped a few pounds as well. Man, Trump. <laughs> but he's just sounding he's so He's preparing. Um, he is preparing. He's in the Not only is he preparing, <laughs> you know, intellectually and you yes. know, he's preparing physically. Yes, he's I think he's ready. I don't know who's winning right now at this moment. But I think it's really tight. Here we go, guys. Let's wow. keep going. Here we go. See? I mean, two weeks left to the election. She's taking a day off. And she had the, the unmitigated goal to say on Friday that Donald Trump is exhausted. And three days later, she's taking a day off. Well, she wow. needs a day wow. off to prep for the interview. Because she didn't prep for Brett. And she got smoked. Mm. Her team had to throw in the tower. We've seen that. And now she has staged Q&As. She has staged town halls everyone's trying to help kamala and trump's trying to help you the voter and that's the difference wow she's not taken seriously her saying trump's not a serious person obama doesn't take her seriously obama didn't want her obama wanted an open primary the other coup leader nancy pelosi doesn't take her seriously she wanted josh shapiro and so kamala is the least serious candidate out there. She's known for laughing and not making any sense. And she talks about <laughs> world leaders who she met fine. Trump's met them all. 
and they're taking him very seriously. Yes. All of these world leaders are now <laughs> scrambling to prepare for Trump's second term. Mm -hmm. There's plants closing in Mexico, preparing for the tariffs. Uh, the EU is already gearing up for a peace summit over Ukraine. Mm. Trump spoke to the Wall Street Journal editorial page the other day, and he said, well, China's not going to go into Taiwan because I'm going to hit Xi with a 200% tariff. And she would never go in because he knows I'm effing crazy. Yep. And wow. that counts for a lot. <laughs> you know, Dana, they're not even hiding it anymore. <clears throat> Maria Shriver actually comes out and says, um, you're not going to be able to, answer, to ask a question. Unfortunately, we have predetermined questions. Hopefully, I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, they, Nelly. This is the same group that was complaining that Trump's McDonald's event was a staged campaign <laughs> event. Like, OK, well, come on. <laughs> Something's happening in the last two wow. days. So uh, this is, has a taste of 2016 to me. Um, I heard today that the Kamala Harris people are floating and preparing the misogyny argument for if she loses. This is anecdotal. Um, being off the trail with the last two weeks to go and your closing argument, which was about we're not going back, it's exciting, there's joy. Now they're back to old reliable, which is yep. he's dangerous and he's a problem for democracy. Mm. The polling shows that's not working. She's not talking about the economy. And now he's stolen all the joy and he's having a good time. And so. When you start looking at some of these early vote returns, Republicans are eating into the Democrats' early vote returns. That doesn't mean that there are more Republican votes than Democratic votes in the end, because that just might mean that Republicans decided to vote earlier than they would have on mm -hmm. Election Day. So mm -hmm. caution there. But if you are looking at momentum and who's winning, at the moment, it does feel like Trump is. And I'll add one other thing. There was a reporter yesterday, I can't remember the name, um, from Politico, and they had one story that said Trump won the day. This is the headline. And the subheadline was Trump won the day because he showed his trademark capacity to entertain and drive headlines on the campaign trail. We say that all the time, right? So this reporter from Politico got hammered by the left, uh, from all the, all the Obama bros, all the people from the campaign. It reminded me of when Joe Biden used to send out memos demanding more negative coverage about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And to me, if you, it, it just has this feel of, if you're winning, you kind of feel like it and you have that wind at your back. To, it seems like to me, she's like in this hard slog and can't figure out what works. Yes, you know, um, there is right. some sound from Ian Sams. Uh, maybe we can hear him, then I'll come back to you, Harold, after the sound. Right, let's stop right there for a minute because they're touching some really valid points. Most definitely. Um, First of all, like, the pre-selected questions. Yeah. That's like a cheat sheet. Like, why can't people tell you their concerns? Exactly. You're not prepared You're not. to answer what the American people wants to know about the economy. And her defense is always going back to Trump. Um, he's not, he can't run the country. He's a danger to society. He's this, he's that. A danger to <laughs> democracy. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, the American people aren't falling for it anymore. Yeah. We see what it is. Kamala, you know, it isn't adding up. Nothing she says adds up and to her actions. And sometimes she just don't make sense. Um, sometimes she, she doesn't she accept don't, accountability for anything that's what she going be on. Saying. And we're under, you know, her right now. This is she's the vice in. president. And... So she's running the country now and it is in shambles. And how can you take off? You're supposed to be working 24 7 for around how the How many clock. days left? Got Maybe like weeks. 13 now? And Less than take two off? weeks are left. <laughs> and you shouldn't be off. You should be working. Here we go, guys. Here we go. I'll take any questions. I'm going to start with Erica Green at the New York Times. We're going to go to Colleen at the AP. We have time for one more. Andrea at Reuters. Right yeah. here. Okay, so the, she says she's ready for questions, and Ian Sams is behind her dictating who she's going to take the questions from. So wow. besides everything being orchestrated, he's even deciding who gets to ask the question. Not her. Mm. Good to be with you. I hope you had a good weekend. Wow. I, I watched this, and I, I listened to President Trump. The one thing I do agree with him on, uh, with what he was saying a little earlier, was that I do hope uh, that the campaign, the campaign I support, that you can't take a day off between now and the next you two cannot. weeks. You can't take a down day. You, you got to be on the road. You got to be three or four events a day. And you got to try to get to two or three states. There's seven states, six states that matter here at the Swing end. States. And I think that voters want to see the candidates out on both sides. It's a, a, a great American tradition, too. This is how candidates close. I, I don't think we can, you can say that you don't think that the close 
that Vice President Harris is offering is one that is effective, and maybe it's not. She thinks she thinks it is. I think she looks at how she got in this race several weeks ago. And remember, before she got in the race, President Biden, in a head-to-head -head against President Trump, was losing outside of the margin of error in every battleground state. Right. So she's close. And I think to Dana's point, there is a back and forth here. I think you. I think the McDonald's. I uh, heard, heard some of the commentary around the table over the last few days. I thought that was a brilliant move on the part of President Trump. Uh, it, it counters and advances, counters some things that have been said about him. It advances some things that he wants, that he'd like voters to believe about him in these final days. But I don't think there's anything curious or wrong or, for that matter, um, uh, surprising about the fact that uh, Vice President Harris is saying to the country, because I think a lot of people in some of the polling data have said, even supporters of President Trump, have said, I'm not sure that I wanted to see an undisciplined Trump over the next four years. There's some people who are fine with it, and that is fine. I don't think it's problematic, though, or, or should that matter be thought of as strange, that she's trying to point out, do you want four more years of the kinds of things you hear from President Trump, even though you may like some of his policies or some of the things that some of the outcomes? Do we want to uh, have the tweets and have the social media and have the kind of name calling? Some people may say, I don't mind that. But for her to point that out, I think for her not to point it out would be malpractice on her part. And we'll have to see if this is what's most effective here at the end. And if it's yeah. not, President Trump will be elected. But if it is, she'll be elected herself. All right. Uh, Woo! Do you agree Science. that agree. she needs to take a day off to study, to tell the American people or ask them, do you want four more years of Donald Trump? She hasn't figured that one out yet. First off, Judge, your hair looks amazing. <laughs> Let's be honest. It looks amazing. He's so smart. Yeah. No, it's true. Liz Cheney, however, she looks like a sad show dog. Oh, Did you, you see her up there? talk about her? She, no, she, you know, she just looked absolutely miserable. She was hoping to have her dad's heart at that point. Look, Kamala can't speak off the cuff. She can't even speak on the cuff. If you stapled note cards to her, her cuff, She'd still be a yeah. flurry of poetry magnets. She's terrible. And she had the edge of being there with Maria Shriver. They both have a lot in common, a shared hatred of nannies. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel's nanny wasn't even a looker, but he had the baby. <laughs> and now Joseph is a successful yes. fitness model on the cover of Men's Health, who also appeared on Dancing with the Stars. But you would never know that if he wasn't born. One of those weird things we don't talk about. Uh, there's a conflict going on between stigma the stigmatizer and the normalizer. Okay. The, the stigmatizing always increases. He's a threat to democracy. He's like Hitler, which we saw again mm -hmm. this week, even though he was almost murdered because of that three months ago. As it's becoming socially cheaper to it vote for Trump, that's the normalization. You're going to see more and more stigma stigmatization. Admitting you voted for Trump four years ago, could have been deadly. But because of notable people like Musk and Tulsi in RFK, the message to everyone else is the coast is getting clearer, the cost is getting lower. And as that cost to endorse Trump gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, you're gonna see this stigmatizing force get more and more wow. intense. Now you look at like her endorsements, Lizzo, Stevie Wonder, Ben Stiller, it doesn't move the needle at all because there was no social stigma attached to her in the first place. So it comes off as predictable, lame, and cowardly. Mm. So I don't know where I'm going to go with this, except to end on a positive note that, Judge, your hair looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm what do you say, you know? Day. It's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page <clears throat> to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. Wow. That said, when the judge's hair is more interesting than speaking about Kamala Harris, goodness gracious. That's a shock, man. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. I just love that they, you know, shine some light on these things that people just don't know. Yes. Um, about the whole situation. They, you know. Most definitely. Um, wow. You know what? I'm trying to figure out who's behind Kamala pulling the strings. It's starting to seem to me like she's the face of someone else's plan. Yes. Yeah, and like, it's hard for her to keep up, you know? I don't think that she wanted this. I think that she was forced to do this. And that's because what it's she's starting not to ready. feel like. Yes, that's what it's starting to feel like. She's to not me, ready. Most definitely. And at first, we didn't even know who she was, to be honest. Most you know what I'm saying? Then when she started speaking, then we, you know, we, 
you know, yes. start getting the feel As of vice her. president, she was kind of in the background of everything. Yeah. And I was so shocked to see her step up, right. you know, with running. I'm like, who is this woman? I didn't even know how to pronounce her name. Right. But it's really sad that she has pre-selected <clears throat> questions. That's not I right. think that's going to hurt her campaign. Right. Because the American people, we want to know about the economy and, you know, the border control. We and need to know everything. If you're not prepared to answer questions, how are you going to be prepared to run the country? Right. And these are some powerful questions that people want to know. Everyday questions like, what are you going to do? And she never can answer them correctly. It's like she beat around the bush. Um, she tried to run up the clock because, you know, she only knows a certain amount of time that she has. So she tried to drag it and, you know, beat all around the question. But at the end of the day, um, she haven't shown us what we need to see. Yeah. I'm sorry. Much. I'm still locked well, in. Well, she has less than two weeks. Two weeks. Um, I'm not convinced. I'm not even nowhere near convinced that she should be the president. I don't know what... You know, ah. what the American people are going to do. I know what we're going to do and, you know, yeah. who we're going to go with because of our lifestyle and what we want for our children. Yes. What we want our children's future to look like. And and I got to be honest, man. Black people are starting to wake up. Yeah. And, you know, can't really use the black card and try to pull that. Yeah. Um, I'm black. Vote for that me. That racist stuff that is starting to die down. <laughs> That does not matter. It doesn't matter. We want to know, you know, your mind, your state of mind. We want to know, are we going to be able to afford gas when we want to, you know, ride somewhere, take our children to school safely? Are we going to be able to afford food for the month and, you know, good food? Exactly. (laughs) Are we going to be able to feel safe? Right. And can you walk into a room full of leaders, like leaders that's, you know, all around the world. Can you walk in there with those guys and um, be bold, be strong, not weak, no sign of weakness? You know, so I don't know, guys. No, I don't see Kamala being capable yeah. of running the United States of America. <sighs> um, this is tough. I love, you know, some of her story. How she worked her way up. Her mom was an immigrant. Yeah, I get that. All of that good and stuff. And that type of stuff, that is what America is about. Yeah. We don't want to lose that America that can take, you know, someone that comes from, you know, a poor country and come over here and can make it and be whatever you want. Like, that is the American dream. Yeah. She represents the American dream, but she doesn't represent the president of the United States. It's a tough job, and I don't know if she can fill those shoes. All right, guys. Um, wow, that was nice. Yes. <laughs> That's all the time, guys. All right, we signing off. It's your boy Sean and your girl Mel. All right, now. All right, guys. Love you guys. Have an amazing day on purpose, guys. Check out the next video coming up soon. All right. Peace. <laughs>